Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. In the training DVD that I did with Michael Ellis titled The Power of Training Dogs with Food, there's a chapter on environmental stressors. This short little newsletter video uh, is Michael's lecture from that DVD on environmental stressors. Okay, so throughout our training, you're gonna hear us talk a fair amount about different types of stressors. And one of the types of stressors we talk a lot about is environmental stressors. And by this we mean things in the environment uh, that can either bother the dog or distract the dog, uh, depending on the dog's temperament. So change in place, uh, change in venue, slippery floors, loud noises, uneven surfaces, things, not active living things, right? So we tend to have stressors that we would call uh, more personal stressors, things like uh, other humans, other dogs, uh, active social stressors like that. And then we have what we would call environmental stressors. Environmental stressors, one of the ways we chiefly deal with them is by doing different engagement games and reinforcing our dog for being around or in these new environments. So for instance, I do a lot of working in different places, working engagement in different places, and rewarding my dog for paying attention in different places. Uh, but not demanding that they directly interact with the stressor. One of the mistakes that people make early in their training is they try to make the dog directly interact with the stressor. So your dog is afraid of a slippery floor and they try to pull the dog onto the slippery floor or they, the dog is uncertain about a chair sitting there or a fire hydrant or a bag on the ground or something that's making noise and they try to lure the dog up to the item and get the dog close to it. Instead, one of the best ways of dealing with stressors is to up the value of the reward so increase the intensity of the reward event uh, by giving higher value rewards, moving more, playing with the dog, getting the dog to chase the reward, and just operating in proximity, find a threshold distance where the dog can relax, be aware of the environmental stressor but not shut down by it, and provide the dog with positive experiences in relation to that stressor. And as the dog gets more and more comfortable, we move closer and closer. It is sort of the same tact we take with distractions. Distractions are just a form of environmental stressor. And what we do is we start further away from the distraction so the dog is aware of it, but not overwhelmed by it. And we provide the dog with lots of reinforcement for paying attention to the handler, for staying engaged, for following and chasing the rewards. And we simply close that distance over time. And hopefully, if we do a good job of this, the dog overcomes their discomfort or interest in that stressor. And we have a dog that's functioning and staying engaged and working around those things, or hopefully ultimately becomes completely neutral to environment, stressors, changes in place, and things like that. That's what our goal would be.